Oh yeah, we got some shenanigans going on here. Thought I would catch you up to speed before I actually start this process and tell you what I'm doing. So obviously we have the uh, mag drill set up right here. I'm getting ready to drill out two holes that's already drilled into the table right there. I don't know what those two holes were for. I don't know if someone along the, the timeline of this machine put those in there. I'm assuming somebody put those in there for a fixturing reason. But what I'm gonna do is drill these two holes out right here. These are tapped for 3 8 I wanna take it to half inch so I can use standard half inch hardware on this right here. And the reason why I'm gonna do this is I wanna bolt an angle plate right here to give myself some more outer support out here for the uh, planer jack right there. It, it, could, it could serve uses later down the road too on other jobs. But the problem that I'm running into now is that I've got to turn the vise this way because with the vise swapped the other way that I was using it and then you have to flip this part over it's actually sticking over here too far and my table will not feed all the way that way. I've got the table fed all the way over and the tool would just barely not clear the end of the part when it was hanging over right here. So it was more lines about right here. So I need to clamp it in this direction right here. I don't wanna go, I don't wanna flip it, you know, 90 degrees and go, you know, side to side cause I still won't have any support that way. I want to do it just like I was doing it right here. So I figured this is a golden opportunity to go ahead and set up the mag drill and go ahead and drill these two holes out right here. It shouldn't be a lot of pressure. The magnet is not making a uh, hundred percent contact because you see you got some voids up in here. So it will try to move if you bump on this too hard, but I'm hoping that it'll get the job done there. So we'll just drill those two holes out using the, using the bucks mag drill. And then I don't know if I'll be able to tap it with this or not. If not, I'm just gonna move this out of the way and just hand tap them. And then I'll be able to put some half inch studs in there. And the goal is to use this angle plate right here. It just so happened that the center distance on those two holes, which is four and a half inches, actually matches up with uh, this center distance right here. So this will work. I'll be able to bolt that on there. And then once I do, I'll actually have it'll sit in that manner right there and I can set the jack on top of that angle plate and be able to use it to help support the work. So all this for this little project right here that's turning out to take more time than what it's really worth, but uh, this is just something fun that I can do and bring you along the way. So I'm gonna get started drilling these holes here now. Well, that actually went surprisingly well with the, uh, with the mag drill. It actually managed to uh, drill it and tap it. I went in there and re-chamfered it. I didn't like the way the, uh, the multi-flute chamfer, it just it chattered too much. So I went in there with the 90 degree single flute and we've got a nice clean chamfer on there now. 
So we're going to set it up for this hole here now. And what I'm doing is, uh, let me find my, my drill bit. <clears throat> so I just put the 5 16 drill in the drill chuck. And that allows me to kind of line up on that, on that hole right there. Once I get everything square and straight, uh, mag it down. And then just have to kind of bump it around just a little bit to uh, make sure that the drill is fitting in that hole good. We'll get that done and we'll drill this next one. This definitely is not an easy task to do by yourself. This would be a lot easier if I had an extra set of hands here to help get everything balanced and steady and then, you know, hit the switch. But I'm trying to do it myself because it's just me around here in the shop right now. We're going to go ahead and pull it off there. Get all the chips out of here first. See if I can uh, give you guys a shot of my struggles here. I want to go a different way. We're going to see if we can orient it this way this time and get it to work. I don't know if you guys can hear that dog out there. I have some neighbors that every afternoon they go outside to hang out and they take their dog and all that dog does is bark nonstop bark 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 it's like they antagonize it is what it sounds like to me i think we might have it right here let's see nope let's see if we can yeah see you can oh yeah just about got it right there I'm going to have to move my strap. I need to move it over a little bit because I can't get the handle in there with the strap at that, that position. But I think that's going to work right there, right where we got it. Do some fine tuning and I'll uh, bring you back for the uh, drilling and tapping action. Pretty good right there. Just trying to get the hole centered up good first. That looks pretty dang good right there. So it's magged in there pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and let off the strap here and uh, reposition that thing. All right, it shouldn't go anywhere just sitting there like that. As long as we don't lose power. So let's hope that doesn't happen. All I'm going to do is just reposition this strap a little bit further back like this right here. And I think that's going to give me enough room for my handle. Just enough to clear that strap right there. So I don't have it taut, but it'll catch it in case it pops off there. All right, I think we're ready to drill. First thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and hit that hole with a chamfer there, because it doesn't really have one. It'll help that drill kind of center up. And I need to put my earplugs in one second. That drill motor is extremely loud for my ears anyway, so I have to put my earplugs in.
Well, that went a, a lot better than I expected it to do. It actually worked out really well. I love having this mag drill and it's come in handy so many times around here to make my job a lot easier. So we've got a couple of tap holes in there that worked out just fine. Well, that actually worked out better than I expected it to do, but we got the job done. I love my mag drill. This thing has saved the day so many times or just made a job extremely easier than, than just trying to do something by hand. So we've got a couple of tap holes now. Let's go ahead and this is the hardware that I'll be using as a half 13 stud. Go ahead and run one in there and see how it is. Looks like it's got a pretty good fit. I'm gonna go ahead and find a bottoming tap and just run a bottom tap in there just to make sure we have adequate depth of thread, which looks like there it is right there. So it wouldn't hurt to actually go a little bit deeper. So I'll do that with a uh, bottom tap. Yeah, so, all right, we gotta get all this cleaned up and then we'll get back to business on uh, getting our part set back up here in the shaper. But this was a, a pretty fun little operation that I got to do that was uh, kind of unexpected. Okay, we've got our angle plate bolted into the end of the table there. Everything tightened up good using our parallels here again. And we're ready to set this guy up. Take our planer jack and set it right out here. I've got my Noga Mini Cool set up here on the tool head. We're gonna give this a try. I've used it a few times over here on the shaper and it does pretty good. Just um, mainly just kind of help keep the uh, cutting edge there cool and uh, from breaking down so much and uh, of course cool the chips. So we'll, you've already seen one side being cut without it. So we'll try it on this side and, and go ahead and uh, use it this time. So we've got it pretty well set there. I've got my depth set at 100,000, so we're ready to go.
just use a two or three mic and get some verification on uh, where we're at on our thickness there. 635. Come back here and get a measurement as well. Back there it's 636. So about a thousand out of parallel right there. Not a big deal on what we're doing here. So we'll take one more rough cut and then uh, do that finish pass on there. We're gonna speed it up on this cut here. We're gonna be running, uh, what we got? 41 strokes a minute on the Shaper. 30,000 step over. See how it does. Well, my tool give out there. I'm just running too fast of a speed cutting that piece of steel right there. So because it chipped out pretty good, there's gonna be quite a bit of grinding to do to, to get this back uh, where I need to go. So I've already got another one. This is a piece of Momax right there that's already got the grind ready to ready to put to work. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this tool in there. That way we can get this finished out. That way I can get the grinding on that later on. All right, so our two sides are finally done. Finish came out nice on that right there. I've already mic'd it. I finished out at uh, 2.532 is where I'm at. On, uh, and it's about one thousandths out of uh, parallel there. It's gonna be fine. So I was shooting for the 2.532 uh, to give it just uh, an equal 30 thousandths all the way around. Try to tighten it up a little bit from having a 16th wobble inside of the uh, receiver there. So we'll get this cleaned up and go ahead and set up and do the, uh, the top and bottom. Okay, we're set up for our next cut here. So we went ahead and uh, swung the vise around back the other direction. So we're gonna travel across this way, go across the link that way. And I figured let's go ahead and have a little more fun here. So we're gonna be taking 225 off each side. I'm gonna, I've already got our touch off right there. Let's take a 200 thousandths cut on this and then that will leave us about a 25 thousandths uh, cleanup pass there. All right, here we go. 200 thousandths depth of cut. Starting with a 30 thousandths step over. It looks pretty good there. We'll probably bump up that uh, feed rate. Doing good so far.
There's our finish for the top of the uh, insert there. Got a nice looking finish on it. We got it on size, so uh, just got to flip it over. One less side to do. We'll probably go ahead and move it down to this side of the vise so that the, uh, the part that's going to be sticking up is going to be over here. We're having to swap out our tool to use the, uh, the big Armstrong tool holder. We're going to be using this tool right here. Just did a uh, fresh hone on it. And the problem is, is when using this shorter tool bit right here, because the way it was positioned, I couldn't get all the way to where we need to stop our cut without the tool head wanting to crash in right here. You know, and I didn't want to stick it way on out of there like that. So we're just going to go with the Armstrong holder and uh, this smaller tool bit right here to get the job finished up. All right, last side. Last side to cut, here we go. We've already got everything set. Just got to engage the feed there. I actually have a, uh, I got a dial indicator down here on the side so that we can monitor our, uh, our stop position. watching this come up on the uh, dial indicator here what I'll do is I'll stop the feed once it gets up real close here right there that's where we want it best thing to do is just go ahead and stop it all together just like that and so make sure we don't do any crashing and I'll just uh, take the hand wheel and hand crank it over just a bit our power feed. That was our finished pass and we've got it squared up the way we want. And what I what what I'd like to do, I've got a radius tool in there now. We're gonna come in here and just blend this corner together with a larger radius than what's in there now. There's a small radius, That's, that probably would suffice just fine, but we'll go ahead and put a nice big sweeping radius in this corner right here. I'm just gonna do that manually by uh, just down feeding and just kind of blending this together. We've slowed it down just a little bit just so you have a little better control over what's going on since you're manually cutting here. I'm not looking at how much I'm feeding. About 10 to 15 a pass here. Make sure my tool is gonna clear. It's gonna be really close.
looks like our looks like what we're looking for right there got it on the first pass actually all I did was just sight the center of the tool right on the edge of the cut and just come on down to blend it together so we got her Just go over there to the grinder and uh, grind us a nice radius on those corners and deburr it good. And we'll be ready for the test fit. All right, so we got to put our corner radiuses on there. I'm just going to use the grinder to get that job done. No need going back to the machine and trying to find another tool or anything. I can just get it done quickly with a flap disc there. This is the tube, the reducer that come with my truck. It takes the uh, receiver down from two and a half to two inch right there. And you can see the large radiuses that are on the corners in order for us to uh, be able to clear and go in there. So I've got one of my radius gauges. This is a 3 8 radius gauge. And I show it like that right there. You can see that's pretty close. That's a pretty close match. So that's what we're going to shoot for is a 3 8 corner radius there on all four of those corners. So I have got a fresh 40 grit flap disc right here. I'll uh, put it on the DeWalt and get started on this. All right, we got all the radiuses ground on the four corners right there. So I'll show you our test fit in the hitch. There we go, we got it to fit. So even with uh, me making it wider, it's still got a little bit of play there, but I mean, that's just absolutely normal. But anyway, we got that thing to fit now, so it's almost done. All it needs is just a, we'll just do a rattle bomb paint job on it to protect the bare metal. And that's going to be it. Have a good hitch to use for uh, when I'm pulling my, pulling my trailers. All right, guys. Well, the uh, trailer hitch modification that I just did is uh, it's finally complete minus some paint. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, rattle bomb paint it. I'll hang it up outside and I've uh, got some black spray paint and uh, give it a coat with that. Um, just do that off camera, paint it, and then I'll get it and put it under the back seat of the truck and it'll be there waiting on me whenever the time comes that I need it. So this was a, a fun project. I have not run the, uh, the G&E here in quite a few months. It's been kind of sitting idle for, for a little while and I wanted to you know, have something uh, fun to be able to come over here and use this machine for. That's why I got it. It's, it's something that I invested in because I enjoy running it. It's one of my favorite machines in the shop to run, especially whenever you got a lot of heavy uh, metal removal to, to do on something. Not that this was a lot of uh, heavy metal removal for this job, but it's still, it's fun setting this up and watching it work or watching it do what it's meant to do and, and watching those chips come off that. That's one of the things about a shaper. It's just kind of uh, you know, almost a hypnotic motion that it goes through whenever you're uh, running it and uh, enjoying it. So I certainly enjoy it when I get to run it. It's not the fastest machine in the shop and there's always gonna be other ways to get something done. But when I'm doing something fun around here, I'm not punching the clock and trying to get something done quickly. I like to come over here and make use of my machine. I just really enjoy it. So anyway, that guy's done. I did wanna tell you that I do have another project plan that I wanna start really soon. I got a couple of little jobs I need to knock out, get them out of the way. And then I've got another uh, trailer hits type project that I wanna do. And what I would like to do is build one of those uh, hitch cranes that goes into the hitch of your truck. It's like a cherry picker. So it's just got the um, you know cherry picker engine lift type of uh, boom on it and use it to be able to pick things up and put it in and in your truck or out of your truck or whatever. I've got the old engine lift outside that I've had for years 
that I don't use anymore, but the cylinder and everything is still good on it. So I plan on using that, just taking the ram and everything off of it. And I'm gonna fabricate all the pieces that go into the trailer hitch of the truck, like where this guy goes. So I'll have a tube that goes in there and it comes out and you'll have a, a base there that the, uh, the cylinder, the crane part's gonna like mount to where it'll swivel as well. So that's something that I've been uh, kind of uh, thinking about coming up with some materials around the shop, trying to not have to buy very much for it, just use stuff that I have and build a, uh, a trailer hitch mounted crane for the truck. So that should be coming up uh, pretty soon. I'm gonna get started on that. So anyway, that's it for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next project.